Right guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to a very belated episode of Sofa Photography. Now, I must apologize uh, for my lack of screen time over the last few weeks. We've been very busy with some of the, some very cool projects on the operation side that we are looking very forward to showing you all in the coming weeks. But uh, you'll just have to stay tuned to see what those were. So uh, yeah, I've had to go back to my normal job, which is actually assistant manager of Tula. So actually helping once again with Dale, our general manager and foreman, our uh, one of our other directors and so on, uh, just trying to get everything ready, you know, for when you are all able to come back to see us, which we cannot wait for. So hopefully that's sooner rather than later. But uh, I did promise you in the last episode of Sofa Photography that when we spoke about uh, shutter speed, I believe, I said that the next week we would be doing ISO. So I know this is about two weeks, maybe three weeks later now. Sorry about that, guys. But we're here to talk about ISO today. And uh, myself and my wonderful lady, Britt, are out and about in the sort of three o'clock in the afternoon sun so it is actually quite hot for a summer's for a winter's day i know chad seems to moan quite a bit about the cold here but uh today it's actually quite warm so sorry chad that you're not uh, out and about this afternoon um but yeah we're out and we thought we'd get a, a a head start on the bright light that this sort of time of the day brings of course if you remember a few weeks ago i said winter does bring quite usable light very early on in the afternoon so I wanted to jump the gun get out a little bit earlier and actually show you that ISO is nothing to be scared of when you have really good light so what I'm going to do is work with these zebra that are having a bit of a cuddle there at the back and if you remember from our sofa safari episodes they usually do this to try to keep the flies off each other's faces you know just that wish washy tail and then also to watch each other's backs for the boogeyman should he pop out at any point but I'm going to work with them and take a few photographs and I think what I'm going to do is because so many people are so intimidated by ISO, you know, there's all these stories that if you push your ISO too high up, you're going to get noise in your photograph, it's going to look terrible, you're going to throw it away. It's just not true. When you have great, great light like this, well, let me not say great, let me say bright light like this, uh, don't be scared to use ISO. You can usually push it up to 2000, if not more, and that's on any camera, you know. Um, with some of the higher end cameras, uh, the more professional bodies, you can definitely push it up even further. But what that allows you to do is really maximize your shutter speed and really get a crystal clear image. Uh, and also it allows you to fiddle with aperture. You know, maybe you want to bring more of the scene in at this point in time. You know, get all those trees in the background in focus. And the way that we do that is by increasing our ISO, which then allows us to increase our f-stop, um, which is actually making that aperture smaller, if you remember, and therefore bring more into the frame. So you see how everything starts to weave together now. So yeah, let me take a few photographs. And uh, what I'm going to do is first start off with a photograph at ISO 2000, which is usually a big no-no in the world of photography, no matter how good your camera is. People are usually quite shy of that. Um, but our chair, when we're dealing with bright lights, as I say, let's give it a try and see what the results are. So let me quickly get a few shots, and then I will show you at the computer in just a few minutes' time. All right, guys, so let's quickly have a look at these zebra photographs um, now that we're back at the computer. And later on, we'll be back at the computer. Uh, once again, having a look at uh, some things that we captured a bit later on during this drive. But because I don't have my computer with me on the game viewing vehicle, kind of have to do it all in uh, one shot back at the PC. Anyway, so um, we can see here I've got my two Zebra photographs, and this is um, obviously just trying to show you that difference between shooting at a low ISO compared to a high ISO. And on the left-hand side here, I have one, if you have a look in the top right-hand corner, what settings I was on, ISO 200 with an F of 4.0 and the shutter speed of 1 over 2500 which is already fast enough to catch most mammals doing um, what they need to be doing but the whole aim of the game was to show you how uh, ISO can push um, can help you push your shutter speed up and also when you're in good light or very bright light because I wouldn't say that this is good light but I would say it's very bright and when you are in bright light you can actually push your ISO up so here on the right hand side we have ISO 2000 and if you have a look at the differences, I was able to then push my f up to 7.1, which just means that there's going to be more in focus. I mean, if you look at the two images, you can see this tree in the background, all these trees quite out of focus. But if you look here, you're bringing more and more into focus of your frame. So sometimes it's quite hard to push your f-stop all the way up to bring an entire scene into focus. Like if you want to get to f-16 or f-11, something that would bring in the entire scene, it's pretty hard to get there because it's just you know it's not bright enough so what you do is you push your ISO up that then allows you to push your f-stop up and you can see here I was even up at one eight thousandth of a second in terms of shutter speed so yeah it just shows you the two differences and where ISO becomes important you know when you when you're trying to bring more into focus or capture more speed or etc etc but I'll tell you what let's click back here for ISO 200 and let's zoom in roundabout on this uh, zebra's head so you can see the two photographs are a little bit different they were taken a few seconds apart 
But if we zoom in there, you can see ISO 200 on the, right, the left-hand side and ISO 2000 on the right-hand side. So obviously when you zoom in really close like this, you can see some visible noise, particularly in the blacks and uh, also where hair is coming down and maybe also the background a bit there. So you can see there is noise, but as soon as you click back out, and zoom out like that you have two very very usable photographs they both have a similar um, uh, exposure as you can see up here so if i click just on this one you can see the exposure and on that one both pretty similar i mean quite a bit of change in the colors there another thing is when you are photographing at low iso you will get more color um, you know not it's, it's not huge and you'll see this a bit later when we look at the other images but for now we'll fo focus on the zebra um, you can see like when you're shooting at a higher ISO, you can lose a bit of the color in the blacks and also in the greens back here, um, etc. So you just lose a bit of vividness and that is because noise does start to come uh, come out. But as I say, when you're photographing it in, in bright light and you want to push your ISO up to get more in frame or more in, in, in focus and also capture more speed, don't be scared to shoot at a high ISO uh, when you pull the picture all the way out like this. If you can show me the difference there, then good job. But as soon as you zoom in, of course, one to one, I mean, that's 100% cropped in. You are going to notice differences. So anyway, that's just to show you quickly ISO 2000 on the right-hand side compared to ISO 200 on the left-hand side and just how you can then manipulate the different settings from there. So yeah, guys, let's jump back out to the vehicle and see what else the afternoon brought. So we've come up here to Mashatan Dam to see what was coming in for a drink. And evidently there was a lot coming in for a drink, but unfortunately they've already had that drink and now they're moving away. Um, I did try to take a few photographs of this scene and I did get, um, you know, kind of a landscape. One is the zebra walking away from me and, and uh, you know, what I often tell guests and, and people that come and take photographs with me is if an animal's walking away from you, and if there's many of them as well, walking away from you, try not take the photograph, you know, doesn't, no one really wants to see a photograph of animals moving away from them uh, unless you have a very dramatic scene going on. Uh, but I did get one sort of landscapey image that uh, I'll put up on the screen for you guys. Um, now so you can have a look at that and um, yeah I thought what I'll do is just stop and actually talk to you about what ISO is and where it's coming from and what you're doing when you're changing it or what's happening when you change it now if you remember from my aperture episode which was two episodes ago aperture is everything to do with the lens it's that iris that opens and closes uh, and then you get shutter speed which is the shutter that sits in front of your sensor inside here and that shutter opens and closes and so what you're doing with shutter speed is dictating how quickly that opens or how slowly it opens and closes bringing more light or less light now iso has everything to do with the sensor that's embedded in your camera and that's why the better camera that you can afford or that you buy the better the iso performance will generally become now that is a little bit of a trick um, statement that because a lot of people don't know this but when you're buying a camera just because you're buying one that has the highest megapixel rating doesn't mean it's going to be the best at ISO and in fact cameras that have a higher megapixel rating tend to be worse off as far as ISO is concerned so for instance I have the D850 which is a 46 megapixel sensor and it is not known for its great ISO performance however you do get um, <laughs> some zebra messing around you I might try to take some photographs but yeah let me do it And I'm photographing right now at ISO 2000. Still keeping that high ISO going because the light hasn't really changed and it just allows me to, uh, to capture movements if these zebra do start running around or dust starts spurting up. Now, as I was saying, I, you know, I'm not saying that you need to keep your camera in ISO 2000 or 1000 or 3000. You need to be very fluid in the way that you use ISO and, and how you manipulate it because it is very powerful. Um, but let me get, carry on with what I was saying. Um, about the cameras and so on. So as I said, this is a D850. It's got a 46 megapixel sensor, but it is not a great ISO machine. And uh, funny enough, as you go up with the megapixel rating, your ISO performance comes down. So you find that a lot of the pro cameras, those big ones that you see that have the, the, the portrait grip built into them, the kind of, sort of like Canon 1DX or the Nikon D5 or D6 that's just come out, those cameras only have like a 20, 21, 22 megapixel sensor because that's the sweet spot for high ISO uh, performance. So the actual, the lower your megapixel rating is, the better your ISO will be, um, or the better your ISO performance will be. But uh, as I was saying, come through the barrel onto the, the, the shutter, which opens and closes, and behind there you have a sensor. Now this camera has a full frame sensor, then you get the APC, APC sensors, which are a lot smaller than the micro four thirds, and they just get smaller and smaller and smaller until you see the one in your smartphone, which is just a tiny little guy. Um, but that sensor, 
is sitting right at the back of your camera and it's really well shielded by that, that shutter. And essentially what you're doing when you're changing your ISO is you're either making your sensor, and, and there's various other ways to explain this and you can find other YouTube explanations for it, probably a lot more scientific than what I'm going to say. But essentially what it is for me is that you're basically changing the sensitivity of the sensor. All right, so you are now artificially injecting light or taking light away from your image. Whereas with the aperture and the shutter, these are actual movements and tangible, you, you're manipulating tangible light, whereas when you manipulate ISO, you're manipulating the sensitivity of your sensor. Now that can have some trade-offs because, uh, and uh, Britt quite likes this analogy, but if you think about it, when you use something like a microwave to heat your food up, you don't want to make that microwave too strong. You don't want it to be on the maximum setting. It's probably going to damage your food, but at the same time, you also don't want it to be too weak because then you're going to be waiting ages for your chicken soup to thaw out so you can actually eat it. Uh, so with ISO, you always have to remember that there's pros and cons to going both ways. So usually what they say is the higher you go with ISO, the more noise you're going to produce in your image. And the lower you go with ISO, the more clarity you're going to get out of your, your image. Now, lower ISO also means that you're going to be bringing in a lot less light, which means you don't have the, 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 the space to manipulate your shutter speed and your aperture as much. Um, however, it also brings in more vivid colors. All right, lower ISO, more vivid colors. Uh, however, when you push your ISO, start going up sort of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 200, 6,000, 400, these are getting to ridiculous ISO levels now. You're bringing in a lot of light, which allows you to manipulate your shutter speed a lot easier and your aperture a lot easier. Uh, but it also starts to sap a little bit of the color out and you start to lose that beautiful vividness uh, that lower ISOs bring. So you have to remember, as with everything in, in photography, it's rather frustrating. One thing leads to a, a con in another thing, which leads to a pro in another thing. It's just this ridiculous revolving circle of making one change leads to another change. And that's why if you go and search something on Google or on the internet called the exposure triangle, you'll find something that is literally a triangle with ISO at the bottom, shutter speed there, and aperture there. It might be the other way around. But uh, and as one changes, generally the other one needs to change. It's kind of like this never ending chasing after the perfect camera setting. Um, so yeah, ISO for wildlife photographers is very, very important guys. It's the only way that we can artificially inject light into our scene. We're not working with studio lighting. We're not working with flash lighting. Uh, you can use a flash if you want. But in general, we're working with just that big bright thing that's blinding me right now. And so ISO really helps when that thing starts to get a little bit lower towards the horizon. We start to lose light and you can push your ISO up, push your shutter speed up and continue to get those clear photographs. So yeah, as a wildlife photographer, be very serious about the ISO performance of your camera. Uh, unless you have, you know, you've thought about it in other ways like I did with my high megapixel camera, which allows me to crop in very tight, but not really good for photographing in low light. So there's always a pro and there's always a con. It's very frustrating. Anyway, let me carry on going. I want to try and photograph these zebra a bit more for you. Don't forget, at the end of every episode, there's two photographs that I'll post at the end and you get to tell me which one you prefer. Right, guys, let's see what we can get. Right, guys, so it is coming towards the end of the afternoon. We've had a great afternoon. We saw a pretty cool male leopard. Um, I didn't, I don't think I really got a good photograph of him, but you know, it's the frustration of wildlife photography. I tried, but we'll check back at the computer. Uh, we also saw some cool giraffe today, some good zebra. Um, there was a nice sighting of a lilac breasted roller, which I got a photograph on my 200 to 400. So hopefully that comes out okay. But uh, the reason why I'm stopping here at the moment is just so we can go through, uh, as I said a bit earlier, I wanted to take a number of shots for you with differing ISO. And usually at this time of day is where you'll notice the biggest uh, change in what ISO is doing to your images. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, old ISO. It brings in light. It obviously helps you fabricate light, which helps you push your shutter speed up, which helps you freeze time, if that makes sense. But at this point in time, the more you push your ISO up, the, the more degradation, degradation your photo is going to go through. So you're going to get noise, you're going to lose color. Uh, it's just going to look like a messy photograph. So what I'm going to do now is just photograph the sky over here, and then we've got the, the, the horizon, the tree line. Uh, and then I've got an acacia, which is really close in the foreground. So it's a nice bit of contrast. And hopefully through these photographs, which I'll show you on the computer in just a few minutes, you'll be able to see how pushing your ISO up can really be devastating towards your image quality. And I mean, I'm going to push it all the way up to 25,600, which uh, also remember when you're in the market to buy a camera, don't get wowed by the salesman saying, oh, this camera can go to ISO 100 million, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better number. 
um, because there's no photograph in the world with whatever lighting you want that's going to look good at ISO 1 million or ISO 200,000 or 25,000 even with like with this one. Uh, so don't be duped by that sort of thing. When you're looking for a camera, look more so for what the megapixel ratings are. Look for what your burst speed is. In other words, how quickly it can do this. Which you kind of want it to be like between 6 and 7 at least. Uh, so don't get duped by ISO. But it is a very important thing. So do a lot of reviews on the camera on, in terms of its ISO performance. And as usual, you're more than welcome to ask me questions in the comments or email me, whatever, you know. Uh, send me a private message. I don't mind. Let me know. Let's chat. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is just finish off taking these photographs. And then I will see you all at the computer. But it's been great to be out again. Um, it's been a while. So yeah, I hope I've done okay on camera today. Uh, I have to get back into the groove, you know. Brit's busy grinning at me at the moment. So uh, hopefully that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, guys, let's go back to the computer. Cheers. Welcome back to the computer, guys. All right, so let's have a quick look at those photographs that I was taking, as I said, of the sky. We had the nice uh, horizon tree line back there and then this little acacia here in the foreground. So I just used this to attain focus, uh, really, even though it wasn't really focusing too well. But we had to talk about ISO at the moment. So this first photograph that I took uh, was at ISO 200. And what I want you guys to do once again is while you're looking at these photographs, as I go through them all down here, and you'll see the differences, also have a quick look up here and watch how my settings change to compensate for that uh, slow bringing in of ISO. You'll see my shutter speed will slowly get quicker and quicker. And it just shows you that as you push your ISO up, you're able to bring your shutter speed up as well, therefore freezing time or bringing in more light or less light. So it just makes it uh, more, um, you know, sort of uh, variable for you so that you, as, a wild, as I said, as a wildlife photographer, you have to deal with natural light. And so you have to kind of figure out how to deal with ISO. There are some people that get away with shooting in auto ISO, and I know some of the newer cameras are getting really, really good at that. But as I say, if you're shooting in anything that's on auto, like if you're in shutter priority, that means that your aperture is in auto. And if you're in aperture priority, it means your shutter is in auto. So when you choose one of these sub-auto settings, it basically means your, your camera's in auto. You're just changing one thing. So if you are going to shoot in ISO auto, or auto ISO, it just means that your camera is going to push ISO up every time to stabilize that exposure as to what your camera thinks is perfect exposure, which is essentially being in automatic. So be careful of that. I mean, it is definitely a way to, uh, you know, shooting in auto ISO to make sure that you uh, your camera will always change that ISO to, to give you the correct exposure. So it is a little bit of a cheat. And as I say, newer cameras are becoming better and better at it. But I always advocate for um, full manual, take control of ISO, shutter speed and aperture uh, and just get that muscle memory down. Anyway, let's uh, go sh through these photographs now. And then I've even got a couple of photographs of some buffalo that we saw towards the end. And the reason why that one looks so horrible, I will explain in a bit. But let's go through these ones of the tree um, and the skyline. So firstly, this is at ISO 200, which is a very low ISO. I can zoom in over there and you can see there's not much noticeable noise. Now, it's a little bit, but when you're out like this, there's nothing really going on. That's perfectly acceptable where it is. But as I go through the images, you'll see now we have to ISO 30, 3, 320 and you can see my shutter speed changed with that. So getting quicker. And at 320, a little bit more noise coming in. There's 200 compared to 320. And then let's just carry on going up from there. So then we go up to 500 and a little bit more noise, but also the, uh, oh, I didn't change my shutter speed that time. You don't always have to. Uh, then we're going up to ISO 800, more noise and the shutter speed has gone up again. And now we're up to 1250, um, and you can see that as it loads up there. Look at that noise coming in now, kind of thing, you know, even here uh, on that branch. So as we carry on going up, now at 1250, uh, we then go to 2000, and more and more noise just coming in. Now at 2000, I'm already at shutter speed 1000, which is more than enough to capture movement in this frame. But, you know, it's, it's not the whole point here. Uh, but let's carry on going. So we've got ISO 3200. And now that whole background just starts to look more and more like Swiss cheese as it loads up. Uh, let's carry on. We then get ISO 5000, which, uh, there we go, starting to look like an old TV box. Uh, we then go to ISO 8000 and shutter speed now 2500. Um, and up to 12,800, 12, which is an ISO I never photograph at. And you can see now I don't even have to zoom in for that visible noise to start representing uh, or presenting there. So now up to 20,000 and then lastly 25,600 which just looks terrible everywhere you look in the frame. So that just kind of shows you how adding more ISO into a scene that is not well lit at all is just going to create so much noise 
that it's basically a junk photograph. I mean, as, as I was saying on the vehicle, if you're photographing with an old film camera, you know, film used to pick up this old TV grain quite nicely and make it look quite romantic, whereas with digital, it just does not do the same thing. I mean, you know, you, you can get it to look that way, but usually that happens in post-processing. Anyway, so let's uh, have a look at this last photograph. This was just of a little bush nearby, also at 25,600, which is my camera's limit. There are cameras that go higher, and as I said, don't get duped by a salesman saying, oh, oh this one shoots at 25,000, that's a throwaway spec. It's, you're never going to need it, you're never going to use it, and if you do, you're going to end up with a photograph that looks like this. So um, you can see I was at 6400 shutter speed here and an f of 7.1. So it does have its benefits. I mean, it's like basically dark at this point. So able to get that really quick shutter speed there. Um, but if I zoom, that is just uh, horrible what's going on over there. And then lastly, what I did was I we came across these buffalo towards the end of the drive, just as we were coming back into the lodge. These are our Duggar boys that hang around the camp all the time. And I thought, hey, why don't I quickly try and take a photograph here at a very high ISO, so ISO 10,000, and a shutter speed of 60. So you can see the photograph is definitely very noisy. I mean, the sun was all but gone there. But, you know, there's still some sharpness coming through. It's it's still there. I mean, it's, it's by no means a usable photograph, but you can see it's pretty cool. And at, ISO, at a shutter speed of 160th, I'm borderline you know i was holding my arms really really still and tight at that point just to not move the camera around at all and then what i thought is let me drop the iso down to 2500 this is the exact same lighting different buffalo who walked in but uh by dropping it down to 2500 i then had to move my shutter speed down to one fifth of a second so that means that my shutter is closing in in one fifth of a second it's opening and closing which is dramatically slow and so you can see there's the trade-off you know at that shutter speed you can you need to be on a tripod if you want to get anything and there needs to be no movement in your frame you can see this buffalo was swinging his head from right to left here and that sort of blurred out his entire face whereas if i was back up at that iso 10,000 and up at a shutter speed of 160th sure there probably would have been a still a lot of movement in the frame as the buffalo moves but there wouldn't have been any of my handshake coming through so yeah guys that just shows you we'll run through these quickly once again how iso basically changes and just destroys your image um, towards the end of it all. So you got to be careful. Uh, as I say, there is a sweet spot for ISO. And for those of you wanting to go into manual, just put your camera, you know, as you practice, focus on just using shutter to begin with. Put your ISO at 400 when you're in good light. Uh, put your f-stop at 6.3 and then just change your shutter speed as you need to. As that day gets or that afternoon goes on and it starts getting a little bit darker, push your ISO up to about 800, maybe go up to 1600. Uh, and then, you know, leave your f-stop at 6.3 and let you have a lens that's quicker than that and just carry on working on your shutter speed until you've got your shutter speed down, which to me is the most important thing for wildlife photography. Don't move on. Don't graduate to trying to manipulate f-stop or ISO yet. Uh, once you've got shutter speed down and you know how it brings in light, brings in less light, then move on to manipulating ISO and then finally move on to manipulating uh, aperture. Anyway, guys, there were a couple of other photographs that I wanted to show you for this week. Uh, let me just take my filters off here, um, filters off, so these are all the photographs that we took. Uh, we did see that male leopard, which I spoke about briefly, and, you know, it was irritating me. Something was going wrong with my camera. I don't know, either that or something was going wrong with me. But this was the male leopard that we saw, and uh, I'm going to edit this up and see if uh, maybe this makes it, or one of these photographs here of this beautiful boy makes it into the last two Im images of this episode for you to all choose and tell me which one you prefer. Uh, and then there was also... Uh, these beautiful photographs, oh, sorry, let me quickly find it, of these zebra with the backlight behind them, which I'm going to work on now to see um, how they look. Then lastly, I did pull out the 200 to 400, uh, just to do a little bit of work with this roller who was sitting quite pretty. There he is, very nice. I was at ISO 250 there, great lighting, so I was able to still keep a fast shutter speed, but not quite fast enough. Even at ISO 60, 640 and a shutter of 1 2,500th of a second, wasn't quite enough but if i zoom out that photograph still looks pretty cool and always remember if you want a pixel peep go for it you're just going to drive yourself crazy like i do all the time or you can just look at the photograph for its face value so from this distance i still think that's a very usable photograph i'm going to try edit it and uh, then there was this, also this one um, of this beautiful lapwing coming into land which i'm going to try and edit up as well and see which one makes it uh, before i leave you i just wanted to actually i'm sorry i forgot to show you let me quickly turn on the filters once again um, 
and just filter to green. I wanted to quickly show you that we can take and photograph like this. This is 12,800 and there are sliders you can use to try and deal with this uh, noise. So if I just push this up, you'll find it under details, under sharpening, and you can just push that up and up and up and up and up and up and you can see it starts to remove the noise but you do also end up losing all the detail. So with noise comes detail, and with the lack of noise, you lose detail. Um, so yeah, you can use this tool, just be careful. I usually only go up to about 1500, 15. If you're having to go past that, then generally your ISO was too high and the photograph is not very worthwhile in saving. But uh, yeah, guys, let me start editing these photographs and I'll put them up at the end, uh, and that means the bird or the leopard or whatever. I'll put them up at the end for you all to have a look at and you can tell me which one you prefer. And then as usual, please leave your comments, likes, shares, all those sort of things down below and I'll happily get back to you. And uh, I know Meg Zanati has offered one of her photographs for me to edit live for you all. So if any of you have a photograph that you would like me to edit live on the show, uh, please just let me know, drop me a mail and we can do that for you. It might be quite fun. Anyway guys, until next time, happy snapping. Cheers.